going through what all going to be the concepts which we are going to work on the logistic execution where we have discussed like a lot of concepts over here so basically when you are trying to work with this logistic execution it's going to be dealing with our outbound delivery process over here now how we are going to execute this outbound delivery outbound delivery is going to be totally taken care with the help of sales order itself over here and in our outbound delivery what are going to be the difference configurations which we need to check we have just listed out so one is going to be the picking process how your picking process will be executed so we will be having a lot of interaction which will be carried out between sd and mm now why mm will be coming into the picture means there are going to be different reasons over here because like the mm department is going to be working with our maintaining stock levels over here so whenever you are trying to issue the goods from the plant we need to activate our warehouse management over here so there's going to be a concept which we are going to learn so how we are going to activate warehouse management and how we are going to pick the stock from our warehouse unit over here and we will be also seeing a concept called as stock transfers like how we are going for transferring the stock from one location to another location these concepts will be done then like uh, once you are going to do the picking process we will be working with the packing so like the product need to be packed in a carton or on a pallet then how the packing process will be executed so there are going to be different scenarios which we are going to work it out and once the packing is done we need to go for arranging our transportation over here so there will be a concept called as route determination which we are going to work on over here so how we are going to arrange the transportation which need to be executed and obviously from the customer we need to go for collection of our shipment cost so like how this shipment cost procedure is going to be designed so how that uh, pricing procedure is going to be activated and how to maintain the condition records those things will be con concentrating and uh, there is also concept called as shipping documents over here so whenever the stock is getting out of the company so along with our truck so there are going to be a lot of documentations which we need to issue so we will be working with a concept called as shipment document and we've also seen how to work with this copy controls because by default our delivery will be created with reference to order so there will be a lot of information which will be getting copied from order to outbound delivery in the same way from outbound delivery there's going to be a lot of information which will be copied into a billing document so how these values are getting copied and if you want to restrict any particular value should not be copied then how you are going to maintain it so those settings we will be concentrating under copy controls and there is some advanced concepts which we need to work on batch management and serial numbers where this batch management is what where we are going to allocate the stock in batches and serial numbers is going to be used basically in the automotive sector where we are trying to issue the a number a identification number for the product which we are going to offer it to our customers over here so in general we were working with this uh, concepts like uh, how we are going to work in outbound delivery so like here we will discuss a lot of things over here so how to go for defining your document types item categories so what are going to be the controls which we are going to work on so how we are going to maintain partial delivery delivery split proof of delivery and acknowledgement which you are going to get it from our customer saying that he received the products and most important concept availability check over here so how you are going to make sure you are going to deliver a product to the customer on the requested delivery date so this is what we will be concentrating over here so in our first session on le first thing we will be starting our classes with our enterprise structure configuration so we'll be not working with all the enterprise structure configuration over here we'll be looking into the configuration which are required for logistic execution now to work with our shipment there are going to be a lot of parameters which we required over here the first thing we need to know what you are going to call it as a plant over here so if we know in domain terminology we are going to call it as a factory or a manufacturing unit but in sap we are going to call it as a plant 
a plant is going to be the place where goods will be manufactured goods will be manufactured over here so apart from this manufacture process over here what all things will be done so it will be also used for inventory management so this manufacturing process is going to be totally taken care by pp department and inventory management is going to be taken care by mm department over here so inventory management is nothing but maintain stock levels maintain stock levels over here so they will be responsible for maintaining stock levels for raw materials or semi finished product or finished product or scrap products different materials they will be responsible for maintaining the stock levels over here so lc team will be having a lot of integration with mm because we will be responsible of selling a finished product and sometimes if the products are refunded back by the customers we are going to maintain the stock in the scrap so this one is going to be the big feature or big integration which we are going to see between sd and mm because if you are going to issue any stock to the customer also so we need to go for checking out the stock levels so how we are going to check the stock and how we are going to issue it is what we will be working on over here so plant is going to be the most important thing which we need to know and next one is going to be storage location over here so storage location is nothing but we are going to address it as a subdivision of a plant so subdivision of a plant is what we are going to call it as a storage location now storage location one plant can have multiple storage location over here one plant can have multiple storage location and each storage location is going to be having different functionality need to be carried out over here now see for example we are having a plant uh, inside a plant we are going to maintain different stock levels so one storage location is going to be basically used for maintaining only raw products one storage location is going to be used for maintaining only semi finish the so one story location is going to be used only for maintaining finished products i can like the same way we can use it one for scrap so one plant can have multiple story location assigned to it so like story location basically we are going to get our stock levels accurate stock count so it's going to provide us the accurate stock count over here how much stock is there in the inventory we are going to get that information over here and for one plant we can assign n number of storage locations over here we are not going to assign storage location to any other unit by default we will be assigning storage location to our plant itself so subdivision of a plant we are going to divide our plant into storage locations over here so there is going to be another entity which we require to know how to do the configurations and next one is going to be our shipping point over here now a concept a lot of importance will be there in logistic execution if you are trying to work with shipping point now what is the functionality of the shipping point over here the so shipping point is going to be the place from where goods will be dispatched from where goods will be dispatched and by default shipping point is going to be the highest level it's going to be the highest level in le head of department you can call it as head of department in logistic execution shipping point because it is going to be the place from where the goods will be dispatched and by default shipping point will be always assigned to plant we always assigned to plant itself we are not going to assign shipping point to any other entity by default we will be assigning shipping point only to plant so there's going to be an important concept like in interviews also they will be asking us so you are going to assign shipping point to which unit always shipping point will be assigned to plant itself we cannot assign shipping point to any other 
in total enterprise structure configuration. You cannot assign it to SESA or you cannot assign it to company code or you cannot assign it to credit control area. No entity. Why? Because inside a plant, we are going to maintain the stock list. So if customer is placing an order, we need to pick the stock and we need to issue it. So it is going to be the plan where we are going to maintain the stock levels over here. So whatever the stock we are going to pick it from the plant need to be transported. And every plant will be having a loading area and an unloading area. So loading is going to be the place where your trucks comes in and wait for the products need to be loaded into the vehicle from where it will be dispatched to the customer. And unloading point is going to be the place where we receive the stock from the vendor. Because trucks coming, they unload the stock. Trucks, trucks coming where company will be loading the stock. So shipping point is going to be the place where we are going to go for dispatching the products over here. So always shipping point will be assigned to plant and shipping point is going to be the highest level in logistic exclusion. Okay. So one plant can have multiple shipping points over here. So one plant can have multiple shipping points. Multiple shipping points can be assigned over here. So whenever you are trying to work with relationship between plant and shipping point over here, so one plant can have many shipping points assigned to it. One plant can have multiple shipping points which need to be assigned over here. So these are going to be the three major parameters which we need to work in our enterprise structure over here. So plant, survey location and shipping point. And dependent entries we need to maintain it. So like what all the assignments we need to carry out, we need to do it. But if you're trying to work on the enterprise structure, these are the three entities which we are going to define right now. We are going to assign it to the configurations required for our enterprise and run the cycle submission. So first thing, let's see how to go for creation of a plant in SAP. So here I'm just trying to work with a uh, company called as Samsung over here because like Samsung enterprise structure has been totally configured in uh, SAP IDIS server. So I'm going to work with that particular enterprise. Series. Now, if you want to go for configuration of our plant over here, so get into SPR under SPR get into SAP reference IMG now under IMG screen over here so if we want to define any entity of a company we need to get into enterprise structure and if we expand this enterprise structure over here there are going to be two steps one is definitions the second one is going to be the assignments so first thing right now we are trying to define our entities over here get into definitions and if we expand this definition so it is going to be part of logistic general so this logistic general can be used by LC department MM department and PP department etc to do any kind of configurations required so if you expand this logistic general over here so there are a number of steps involved in it and we are interested in going for configuration of a pump where you can see an option, define, copy, delete, check, plan. Now once you turn this IMG activity, define, copy, delete, check, plan. So that's going to be this way. So there are going to be two steps involved. One is straight away, without copying a plan from a reference, we can define it. That's nothing but define plan. And there is another option where we can copy the plan from a standard. Now, why we need to copy the plant from a standard over here? Because there are going to be a lot of dependent entries which has been associated with the plant. So if you want to maintain the dependent entries, we need to copy it. So straight away, if you're trying to define it, all those dependent entries will be not maintained. And whenever we are trying to run our sales cycles, so there are going to be a lot of settings which we need to maintain in the back. So what happens is nothing but 
if that dependent entries are getting updated so life of an end user is going to be more easy to work with the transactions so in real time also whenever we are trying to go for creation of a plant over here we are trying to copy it from a standard because in the standard all settings has been maintained accurately because that the standard plant is going to be provided from sap labs itself over here so we can copy the values from that existing plant so here what i'm going to do i'm going to copy the values from an existing plant over here where i'm trying to take my reference plant where i'm going to take my reference plant as 23 double zero and i'm going to copy all the entries maintained for 23 double zero to my plant over here so to our plant so to our plant where i'm maintaining my naming convention as uh, smp3 samsung plant number three already okay otherwise let me maintain it as sm1 samsung plant number one over here so always plant code is going to be maximum of four letters which can be alphanumerical combination so there's going to be my reference plant where i'm going to copy the values to sam1 so how to do this copy is what we need to check it out over here now this is going to be the first step which we are going to work on copy delete check plant now once you turn this img activity so that's going to be the screen and ec02 is going to be the transaction code where you are trying to copy the values now in this particular screen from the left hand side you can see an icon called as copy icon copy icon now once you turn this copy icon so what all tables required for copying the data because in sap whatever the data we are trying to save it is going to be saved in the form of tables because sap is using oracle database and in oracle all the values will be saved in the form of tables so what all tables required for copying the data only those tables will be getting reader up and we are going to get this pop-up message over here where we need to go for entering of our reference plant so reference plant maintained as 2300 over here and to which plant you want to copy the values and this would be the place where we are trying to define our plant i'm maintaining our plant on the naming convention of sam1 over here and hit on copy now these are going to be the dependent entries which i'm trying to talk about so there are going to be number ranges and address which will be copied from the existing plant to our plant over here so simply hit on continue now system is giving some prompt messages do you really want to transport the number range hit on yes and you can see how much percentage of tables has been weighted up I'm just trying to create a new request over here. So create request. Awesome. Oh, there's a naming convention which I'm trying to maintain it. And under this particular request, I'm trying to save the values. Okay. So all the data from plan 2300 has been copied to SAM1 over here. So you don't continue. And that's going to be the thing and if we're getting to completed activities over here so all the data from plant has been copied to sam1 so whatever the naming conventions maintained for our plant 2300 has been also updated to our plant sam1 which need to be replaced so come back and you can see an option called as define plant over here now once you turn this define plant over here so that's going to be this one now uh, in this particular screen hit on position and select our plant sam1 and you can see the naming convention is coming as barcelona barcelona the reason is we copied the plant from an existing one so all the entries has been updated over here so update this information now select our plant over here getting to details and do the necessary changes over here so i'm 
updating the values Nansing production plant so here just maintain factory calendar as 01 over here and rest of the fields are in the display mode if you want to update the values in this particular fields over here get into address stack and this could be the place where you can do all the updates so first thing let me delete all the entries okay. so title I maintain as company over here maintain the name I maintain it as in Samsung production unit and search term I maintain it as SA M1 over here I maintain all the required information street information so street I'm just maintain it as a local industrial area house number and just maintain some dummy values over here postal code and city of operation country in in country what is the region zero one is going to be the region of the Pradesh. and if you want to capture more details so we get into more fields icon over here if we expand this more fields so more information related to our plant we are going to capture so where we can go for maintenance of our building code, room number, flow number, care of. So all these fields you can maintain which are relevant. Okay. If you don't want to capture more details, don't try to expand this folder. Okay. Let's come down. So any phone number, fax numbers, mobile number, email address, maintain all that data. Over here. Once maintain it, if you want to check out how our planned information will be getting displayed, we can see an option called as preview so if you hit on this preview icon over here so there's going to be the format how our plant information will be getting displayed and once you check this information over here don't continue don't copy there's going to be the copy icon so hit on this copy icon now go for civic So the values has been updated over here so only thing you can check it out over here country has been maintained as i am but the description is coming as pay so region has been selected as 01 but description is coming as pass load to avoid this confusion just come out of the screen once and try to log in once again define plant right on position select our plant sam and if you get into details of this SA M1 over here, so all the data will be getting updated. Okay. So that's going to be the first step where we have gone for defining of our plant over here. Where we have maintained by the entry SA M1. Now for this plant, what we need to do, we need to go for maintaining storage locations. So how to work with our storage locations over here. So under enterprise structure itself, it is going to be part of material management. It's going to be part of material management. Because MM guys will be responsible for creation of this storage locations over here. Inventory management. Now if you expand this material management over here, you can see an option called as maintain storage locations over here. Now once you turn this IMG activity maintain storage location. So now system is giving us a prompt message over here for which plant you want to go for maintenance of our storage location so maintain our plant as SAM1 over here and hit on continue and hit on continue over here now you can see by default five entries has been maintained five storage location has been assigned to our plant SAM1 the reason is we copied the plan from a reference one two three double zero so what all entries maintained for plan two three double zero has been updated over here so i cannot use the same story location to work it out so first thing i'm just selecting all the story locations and delete this entries so how to select it so you can select with the help of the selection blocks so step by step you can select one by one story location over here otherwise 
you can take the help of this icon over here. So this icon is nothing but deselect all. So if you want to deselect all the entries, deselect all. So if you want to select only a particular block, now for example, I want to select only this SL02. You can place your cursor over here and hit on select block. Only that particular entry will be getting selected. If you want to select all the entries in one shot, select all over here. So you turn this icon select all, so all the entries will be selected. And if you want to delete, it's going to be the option of delete. So hit on delete over here. So all the entries will be getting deleted. So hit on continue. Now always keep in mind whenever we are trying to delete any particular entry once you delete it always make sure you're trying to save it without saving it data will be not getting updated so go for save so we are getting our request number so update under that particular request so whenever you're trying to work in sap there are going to be two requests which will be getting generated so one is going to be customization request and second one is going to be the workbench request version. So all the configurations are going to be saved under customization request version. Okay, so I'm going to use this request for updating the values. And workbench request is going to be used for saving of our access sequence condition tables. Okay, so one we are going to call it as a client dependent. Like customization request, we are going to call it as a client dependent, and our workbench request is what we are going to call it as a client independent over here. So, what you mean by this, we will be seeing in our coming classes, like how to work with it. Okay. Okay. Now, once you have deleted all the story location which has been maintained, now in this particular screen, we need to maintain our story locations over here. So, to update the story location information, take the help of new entries so maintain our story location the first story location I'm defining it on the naming convention of FN01 over here which is going to be used for maintaining only finished products that's going to be the first story location and second story location I'm using it as a scrap story location SC01 which is used for maintaining only scrap products right now I'm not trying to do any configuration required for raw materials and semi finish because we don't work with raw or semi finish we only work with our finished products over here. Finished products itself. So I'm maintaining another story location for our packaging. Where I'm maintaining it as a BN01 over here. It stands for packaging. Packing products. So what all products required for packing? We are going to maintain it in VN01 story location. So basically our plan will be having three story locations maintained FN01, SC01, and VN01. Okay. So maintain multiple story locations required for the plan configuration and go for saving it. And done. I'm just trying to update it over here. So story locations we are having FN01, which is used for finished products. Second one is going to be SC01, which is going to be used for scrap. Products. And we are going to have VN01 over here, where VN01 is going to be used for packing products. Okay. So these are going to be the three story locations which we are going to work on finish, scrap, and packing. Now, once we maintain this one, come back. Now, what is going to be the next entity which we require? We can see. An option called as purchase organization over here. So we require this particular entry as well, purchase organization, because this purchase organization is going to be responsible for purchasing the products. Because right now we are going to work with the concept called as stock transfers. So where we are going to transfer the stock from one location to another location, so we require this particular entity called as purchase organization where purchase organization will be responsible for purchasing the products for the company. Okay. So we require this particular entry as well. Purchase organization.
purchase organization like uh, it will be totally involved in purchasing the products purchasing the products for the company so they may be going for purchasing of raw materials or semi finish or packaging lot of products what all products required for purchasing for the company they will be responsible for purchasing over here so I'm just going to create one entity under purchasing. That's going to be the purchase organization. So if we turn this IMG activity, it's going to be this way. So first thing, let me check it out whether we are having a standard purchase organization which has been maintained for Samsung company. So I'm having an entity on the naming convention of SAPU. So no need of doing any kind of configuration. So in case if you want to go for defining of your own purchase organization, so we can take the help of UN plus. So maintain the code, for example, let's define a new one. I'm defining it on the naming convention of SAM1 over here and maintain the description. So maintain it as in the Samsung purchase of. So that's going to be the purchase of. So maintain this information, turn enter and go for zip. So this is going to be the naming convention maintained for our purchase organization. Easy to create. So always score is going to be of four letters, which can be alpha numerical combination. Over here. So maintain that settings over here. Let's say M1 is our purchase organization. Now next entity which we require over here is going to be our shipping point. As I mentioned, shipping point is going to be the place from where the goods will be dispatched. Uh, we need to go for defining of our shipping point. A lot of information need to be incorporated in the shipping point as well. Now see how we are going to define that shipping point. So shipping point is going to be part of logistic execution over here. So if you're getting to logistic execution, so the number of steps which are getting involved over here, so that's going to be the step which we are going to work it out. Define, copy, delete, check shipping point. So in later classes, we will be seeing like what is the functionality of this loading group, transportation group, transportation planning point. These things will be coming in our later classes. Right now, we are interested only in defining shipping point over here. Now, uh, once you turn this IMG activity, define, copy, delete, check shipping point. So there are going to be two steps involved in it. Define shipping point, copy shipping point. We are not going to copy our shipping point. We are going to create shipping point question so we are going to perform first step in this particular screen define shipping point now once you turn this activity over here define shipping point so this is going to be this way and you can see lot of sample data has been provided by sap over here a lot of interest has been maintained almost around 280 interest has been maintained over here so if you want to define your own shipping point Take the help of new entries over here and maintain the values in this particular screen. First thing, I'm trying to maintain a naming convention for our shipping point where I'm maintaining it on the naming convention of SAM1. SAM1 over here and maintain the description over here Samsung shipping point. And go for assigning of our factor calendar zero one. Now, in this particular screen, you can see we cannot maintain any country information over here. This country information is going to be totally copied from our address. So, if you're getting to address tab over here, so this would be the place where we go for updating the address of our shipping point. So, maintain the company as uh, title as company, maintain the description. Where I'm trying to maintain a Samsung shipping point and search term I maintain it as SAM1 and maintain all the required data. So, street I'm updating it as an uh, so house number, postal code, city of operations, country, and the region. So, if you want to capture more data, telephone number, mobile phones, fax numbers, email address. You can update all this information over here. Once you maintain this information, if you want to check out 
how this values will be printed. So there is an option called as preview icon over here. So simply hit on this preview icon and this is how your values will be printed. So Samsung shipping point, so followed by house number, street, pin code, city and country over here. Now hit on continue, copy these values country and transportation zone copied from the address data. Now you can see country information has been copied but we have not maintained any information related to departure zone. Now this departure zone is going to be the place the goods will be forwarded. So this one will be playing a big role departure zone in our route determination. In SAP we are going to call it as a route in which route you are going to deliver the products. Normally, we are going to call it as a route, but in SAP world, we are going to call it as a route, route determination. So where we are going to maintain our departure point and destination point over here. So this would be the place where we are going to update this departure point. So in our coming classes, when we are trying to work with route, we come back to shipping point and we maintain this information, departure zone. In the same way, you can see working times. So what are the working timings of this particular shipping point? We can maintain this value so for sure. And this one will be also playing a big role in our concept called as availability check over here. Like how we are going to make sure stock is going to be dispatched to the customer on time. So there will be a lot of parameters which will be taken into consideration. And this one will be used as one of the parameter for picking. So determine loading time, determine picking time. So this information, we are going to maintain it over here. And this reflection is going to be seen when we are trying to deliver the products and getting a confirmed delivery date. So right now, we are not maintaining any of these values over here. So in coming classes, when we start working with availability check concept, we maintain a lot of information in this particular field. Okay. Right now, we are just interested in defining our shipping point, where we have defined it on the naming convention of SAM1 and updated the address. Now go for shipping it. So data was saved and shipping point has been created over here. And we have created it on the naming convention of SAM1. So till now we have done a lot of configuration over here. So we have seen like how to go for creation of our plant and where we have created our plant on the naming convention of SAM1 and storage locations over here. So subdivision of a plant is what we are going to call it as a storage location and we have created around three storage locations over here. One on the naming convention of FN01 for finished product, second one SC01 for scrap and Third one, VN01 for packaging over here. And next one, we have gone for creation of our shipping point. The shipping point is going to be the place from where goods will be dispatched. And we have created a shipping point on the naming convention of SAM1 over here. The next one is going to be our purchase organization. So we require this purchase organization because there is going to be some uh, internal transfer of goods which will be executed. So we have also gone for creation of this purchase organization. Now once you maintain all the entries, now in the same way you need to do the configuration on sales and distribution. So on the sales and distribution, there are going to be two entries which we need to do. One is going to be your sales organization distribution channel. We know those functionalities. We have seen everything in sales and distribution. How to go for configuration of sales organization and distribution channels over here. So that's the reason I'm just trying to skip it. Now once you define this entries, what is the next step? You need to assign this entries over here. So that's going to be the next step. Once you're going to define the entries required, assignment. Now under assignments over here, so first thing, get into logistic general over here. Logistic general. Uh, under logistics general, there's going to be the step which we are going to work on, where we are going to assign our plan to company code. 
because there are going to be some financial transactions which will be carried out because we are going to sell a product and once we are going to sell a product there are going to be some stock which will be getting updated so stock levels are going to come down when stock is coming down transactions will be getting recorded and company code is going to be providing the total information related to the financial transactions so this would be the integration point between mm and fi so right now first thing we need to assign our plan to company code okay now once it on this img activity assign plan to company code so that's going to be this one now basically i cannot take the help of new entries to assign our thing now see for example if you're hitting on new entries so maintain our company code so i've defined my company code on the naming convention of sa m1 itself i think so smi sorry smi this is my company code smi and to this company code we need to assign our plan which we have to find to say m1 and once you turn enter now we are getting an error message by default our plan sa m1 has been assigned to company code 2300 over here the reason is we copied our plan from a reference plan and the reference plan was 2300 and that reference plan 2300 has been assigned to company code 2300 over here so i cannot assign same plan to other company code so one plan can be assigned to only like we can assign multiple plans for only one company code we cannot assign same plan to other company code over here now see if you are taking an example of a reliance uh, i cannot assign reliance plan to tata entity in the same way tata plans cannot be assigned to reliance entity over here so always plan can be assigned to only one company code and by default our plan has been assigned to 2300 so this relation is wrong first thing i need to tell you the relationship which has been maintained between our plan sa m1 and company code 2300 so cancel this transaction let's come back so hit on position and select our plan sa m one position so by default plant sam1 has been assigned to company code so select this particular entry over here and go for delete go for delete so when you're trying to delete an entry there is some dependent entries which are also getting deleted so hit on yes please correct account determination fine just hit on continue over here so number of deleted entries are one fine now go for saving of this particular entry once you delete anything we need to make sure we are trying to save it now once you save it once again take the help of new entries and assign our entries so company code sm i n to this company code we are trying to assign our plan sm1 turn enter and go for submit data was saved and link has been assigned over here where we have assigned our plan to company code uh, sir i want to ask you a question that this company code is already created yes. uh, it has been already created in the past okay, okay. so i'm just trying to use this uh, company code because uh, Uh, already enterprise structure for samsung has been established in the system so i'm just trying to do this one okay. so this is going to be the only step which we are going to perform under logistics general where we are trying to assign our plan to company code now once you're done with this this is going to be the next step sales and distribution of machine Now, under sales and distribution over here, we are going to perform only one step over here, where we are going to assign our plan for the combination of sales arc and distribution channel over here. Because from which sales organization? Now, what is the functionality of sales organization? They will be responsible for selling the products. To whom they are going to sell the products? To the customers. So, what are the different customers the company can have? A company can have. 
direct customers, wholesale customers, bulk buyers, different set of customers. Um, we are going to call that customers as distribution channel submission. So from which sales organization to which set of customers from which plant we are going to supply the products we need to maintain a relationship over here. So this combination is what we are going to call it as a sales line. This combination we are going to call it as a sales line over here. Where sales line is nothing but combination of our sales organization plus distribution channel plus division. Sorry, not division. It's going to be plant. If you maintain it as division, it will be acting as a sales area. So there is nothing but sales line. Combination of sales organization, distribution channel, and plant membership. Uh, here I'm having a um, one uh, sales organization which has been already created. So if we turn this IMG activity, uh, that's going to be the screen where we are going to maintain our interest. So we are going to assign our plan for the combination of sales stock and distribution channel operation. So if you want to maintain your relationship, hit on new interest operation. So hit on new interest, maintain our sales stock. So sales stock has been defined on the naming convention of SAM1, I think so. It's going to be the same thing, SAM1. And we need to go for assigning of our distribution channel so already one distribution channel has been assigned direct sales as seven and for direct sales products will be supplied from our plant sa m1 question so maintain that equation where i'm trying to assign our plan for the combination of sales stock and distribution channel from which sales organization for which set of customer products will be issued from which plant i maintain that equation in this particular square. So maintain the setting and go for separate. So already I have gone for defining of our sales organization and distribution channel. So I'm using the same thing. So sales organizations has been created on the naming convention of SAM1 and distribution channel on the naming convention of S7. Because like distribution channel is going to be basically two letters, alphanumerical combination. So there's going to be the step where we are trying to work it out, where we have assigned our plan for the combination of CESA and distribution channel operation. Come back. So there's going to be the step over here. There is another step on the sales which we need to perform, business area assignment so this one is also going to be related to the finance because like business area is going to provide us how much revenue we are making it now if we hit on this business area account assignment over here there is a step called as assign business area for the combination of plant and division we know that division is nothing but group of products like how we are going to maintain or how we are going to categorize your products so all mobile phones will be coming under one division. All TVs will be coming under one division. All laptops will be coming under one division where we are trying to segregate our products over here. So business area is going to provide a report how much stock we are having in our plant. For that purpose, we work with this assignment called as assign business area for the combination of plant and division. Based on that report, we can analyze whether we need to go for purchasing more products or how the sales process has been executed. For reporting purpose, we use that business area functionality over here. So we need to do this assignment where we need to assign business area for the combination of plant and division. So already a business area has been created. To that business area, we are trying to assign our plant and division over here. So if you are taking the help of new entries, 
So maintain our plan. Let's say M1 and try to assign divisions over here. So I'm having a division on the naming convention of SL. There's one division which I'm having, Samsung Bubbles. I'm trying to assign that division over here. Samsung Bubbles, SL. So assign that division over here and which business area will be taking care of. So there is a business area on the naming convention of SMBA. Samsung business area. So maintain this equation where we are trying to assign our plan and division to our business area. Turn entry, turn enter, and go first seven. So where we are assigning our plant and division to our business area over here. So this is going to be the another step which we need to perform under sales and distribution. So basically under sales and distribution, first thing we are trying to assign it for the combination of sales of distribution channel and plant sales line. And next step was assign business area for the combination of plant and division. These are the two steps. Okay. So till now what we all seen is nothing but we have seen like how to go for creation of our plant, storage locations, shipping point, and we started working with our assignment where we have assigned our plant to company code, where we have assigned it to sales line over here and we have assigned our plant and division to business area. So reminding configurations we are going to finish it off in the coming class and we will be saying a new class. Okay. So able to follow these things man? Yes sir, we already studied that one. <laughs> so already we work with all these things. So. Yeah. I just want to ask you one thing yeah. that uh, in one part you assign the plan to uh, just one distribution channel which is direct so we don't need indirect. Now if you want to go for it we can maintain it because right now I'm having only one distribution channels created so I'm trying to assign it. Okay. That's only the reason. I'm not having multiple distribution channels. Okay. 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 Right. I'm just stopping it over here for today. So tomorrow we can...